Hey there guys, welcome to the post-Hurricane Sandy edition of uh, my tech blog. Uh, as you can see, Sandy swept through here and uh, took quite a bit of material off of the trees in my neighborhood. Fortunately, there was no major damage. I never lost electricity or anything like that. Uh, I have a lot of friends up in New York that did, but uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to keep this short and sweet because it's still pretty unpleasant to be out. I just uh, I grabbed kind of a lull in the rain here. So... The topic of today's conversation, once again, is going to be this idea of what happens when you take uh, these kind of manifold moves, these weave-like moves, and you stick them in an atomic context, except an atomic context where you're kind of working in a place of uh, horizontal versus vertical kind of planes, right? Uh, we first visited this when I was talking about taking inversions, that is, the split-time same-direction inversion, and the split time opposite inversion, realizing that they could be performed in such a way that uh, the planes were in an atomic kind of relationship to each other, and then applied that to a horizontal versus vertical place, right? Okay, so then what happens if we start taking the same relationship and applying it to uh, other manifold-like moves that we know and love, like say, I've got my three-beat weave right here, and uh, just like I did with my uh, inversion, I'm going to go ahead and take my three-beat weave. And with my right hand, it's going to switch into a horizontal kind of place. And the place that I've been finding works best for this is if, say, I have my right hand poi rotating uh, counterclockwise as I look down on it from above, right? In which case, all the standard rules of three-beat weaves apply, which is I get a single rotation for the poi on its native side and two rotations for the poi on its non-native side. And in the horizontal context, what we're substituting in is two rotations on top, one, ro or excuse me, yeah, two rotations on top, one rotation on the bottom, right? Um, now, if we switch it up to a context where we're playing with a buzzsaw weave, for example, which still qualifies as a three beat, it, it has all of uh, the major features, but we change it up such that there is no point at which the poi crosses back over to its native side. It is always on the non-native side of its hand, right? In which case, we wind up with this arrangement. Still follows all the rules. Whoop. We do introduce kind of a, uh, an insides kind of position to it, but otherwise, totally fits the bill, right? Once again, the interesting thing is, it always looks, when you're looking down at it from above, as though the uh, right-hand poi is turning in a counterclockwise fashion, yeah? Okay, so what makes this so incredibly different from the inversions that we played with last week? Well, as it turns out, the only way to get that inversion kind of movement is if we change the direction of one of the poi. Um, Tracy Wilhelm has been referring to this property as uh, polarity, and really what it is is it's switching the direction of one of the poise such that um, it switches the atom that you're playing with from being an, an atom, to, or rather, we decided the overall term for these should be quarks. It changes the quark that you're using from being uh, an atom to a tangle or vice versa. And in that kind of fashion, it changes where the safe points are to mesh the poi together, right? So as I'm performing my inversion,